Hey guys, welcome to this video on data science interview questions. In this video, I'm going to share with you three questions that I was asked in a recent interview at a tech startup. I felt that uh, these questions were uh, pretty interesting and uh, they would be useful for you guys and your interviews. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out what these questions were. So uh, before we get into the questions, I just wanted to share that uh, data science questions can be a mix of open and close ended questions. So close ended questions are questions which have one right answer or, uh, you know, you, uh, you don't have to uh, think about it or, uh, you know, come up with different variations or anything like that they just have one right answer whereas when it is an open-ended question then you might have to spend some time thinking and that, that it can have a number of different answers based on different scenarios so you could be asked both the types of questions um so let's look at the first question i have here uh the first question is that uh, you fit Two linear models on a data set, model 1 has 25 predictors and model 2 has 10 predictors. So what performance metric would you use uh, to select the best model based on the training data set? Now whenever we are building uh, models here, it's a linear model, sometimes one model can have a lot of predictors and some of sometimes it may have another model may have fewer predictors so does that mean one is better than other or had, does the presence of a large number of predictor mean that one model is uh, better than the other uh, so what performance metric would you use now this is kind of a open-ended question because many people can interpret in many different ways now the answer that i gave was adjusted r squared because uh when whenever we are building a linear regression model r squared is a good matrix and we always want it to be between zero to one but let's say i have two models and both of them have pretty high r square uh, but one of them has a lot of uh, predictors and the other one has fewer predictors so how do i know um, whether having all these predictors is really improving my model's accuracy and performance in any way or i'm just unnecessarily complicating my model so i felt that i just did r square because it only increases if the addition of a new predictor improves the performance of our model so that could be a good matrix uh, to understand which of the two models the one with 25 predictors or the one with 10 predictors is actually um, uh, you know performing well if you have a different answer if you feel that I should have given some other answer let me know in the comment section because like I said it's an open-ended question the next one uh, was uh, suppose we have a function like minus 4x squared plus 4x plus 3. Find the maximum or minimum of this function. Now this is a close-ended question, right? It, it would have only one right answer. Um, so I was given this function. You could be given any other function and you might be asked to find the maximum or minimum now this is a simple quadratic equation but it could be even a higher degree of equation so to solve uh, a question like this uh, you need to find the derivative of this function uh, this is a simple quadratic equation so you may just uh, solve it without using derivative but i'm just saying you need to use derivative because if it's a higher order um, uh, equation then it you can use derivative but here also i have said that 
uh, our function is minus 4x square plus 4x plus 13 which is in the form of x square plus bx plus c and whenever a is less than 0 that means that the function has a maximum value this is something that we have read in school you can go back and refresh it if you uh, don't know about it so based on that we can say that this function will have a maximum value because part of the question was uh, to figure out whether this function will have a maximum value or minimum value so because the coefficient of x square is negative so we determine that it's going to be a negative uh, sorry it's going to be a maximum value so now to find what is that maximum value we take the slope of our function uh, so f dash x it's uh, minus 8x plus 4 and we know that at the maximum point the slope is going to be 0 so minus 8x plus 4 is equal to 0 which gives us x equals to 0.5 and if I put 0.5 in my equation then it gives me the uh, highest value for that function which is 14 uh, so I forgot to put the 2 as a uh, superscript um, uh, uh, in the equation but that's 4x minus 4x square it's square it's not multiplying by 2 so this function will have a concave shape and uh, the maximum point is going to be at 0.5 and 14 so that's how you can solve a question like this if you are asked uh, in the in the interview Okay, so the third question, it's actually it has gained two parts. So there is a correlation matrix. And the question is that, uh, okay, so this is your correlation matrix. And using all the features, um, is using all the features in a model appropriate for predicting or uh, and inferencing Y? So if you see here in this correlation matrix, we have our independent variables which are x1, x2, x3 and x4 and we have our dependent variable y and we see that uh, all the variables are pretty highly correlated to each other. If you see the correlation between x1 and x2 it is 0.98 and between x1 and x3 it is 0.98. 88 and between x2 and x3 it is 0.75 so there's a lot of correlation uh, high correlation between the independent variables and uh, so the question is asking us if this is our situation if this is how our uh, input variables are uh, related to each other then should we use all our independent variables uh, or all the features in other words to predict why or should we not and the second part of the question is again in the same situation should we use all our input variables for inferencing why or should we not so that's the question I hope it is clear um, so my answer for the first part is it like if this is our situation should we use all our variables for predicting y so i said that no because they are really highly correlated to each other so there is going to be the issue of multicollinearity in our model so to avoid multicollinearity we should uh, follow different approaches such as dimension reduction uh, feature selection stepwise uh, regression and try to uh, remove the multicollinearity before we build our model. Uh, so this and the second part of the question was should we use all these input highly correlated input variables for inferencing y. So predicting y is different from inferencing y. Uh, in predicting y we want y to be as accurate to its actual value as possible but when we are doing an inference for y we want to understand what is the relationship between y and all the input variables we are not really concerned um, uh, with the predict predictive power of our model because that's not our goal our goal is to understand how is x1 related to y how is x2 related to y and how each of them are impacting y so in such a case we should use all of our input variables because accuracy is not a goal 
of uh, this kind of a problem so that was the third question and uh, that brings me to the end of this video uh, those were the three questions uh, if you have any different answers please share them in the comment section and I will take a look and maybe I will learn something that I don't know already. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, um, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.